with many that the U.S. the U.S. Heritage. Five, four, three, two, one. Four minutes, Hey guys, I'm City Walk City Wall, and this is City Skylines Mars. This episode is the first time we're going to be building anything on this map, really. And the thing that really has to be built before anything else is the connection to the outside of the map, the road connection. My idea for this, for the road that leads from the colony to the edge of the map, is that, you know, there's a number of different colonies all over Mars. This isn't the only one. And... They are connected, but I'm thinking that they're connected by tunnel, since it probably would be easier. I mean, I don't know if it would be easier or not, I'm just sort of guessing, but I'm guessing that it would be easier to get from point A to point B, you know, hundreds of miles away on Mars if you're underground, as opposed to having to build some sort of extended airlock system or get from point A to point B in like, you know, some sort of surface rover thing you know I, I just feel like you could you could go pretty fast you don't have to worry about the atmosphere if you're if you're really far underground so this road that leads out of the city is going to be going into like a tunnel basically and that tunnel will lead all the way to the edge of the map it's also going to be kind of a dual purpose tunnel because i'm thinking that outside of the dome at some point along the line directly outside of the dome here we'll build sort of like the spaceport so this will also be access to the spaceport as well. So the strategy for building any road in the City Skylines Mars series is going to be pretty similar. I started off here by using the vanilla freeways, but later on you'll see I, I switched to a much skinnier freeway that's a little bit more uh, close to the size and width of the invisible roads and the conveyor belts that I'm using. So that's kind of an upgrade at some point but basically what I'm doing is I'm laying down uh, an elevated freeway first in order to just like visually see where the road is going to go and then I go through with the conveyor belt props and just cover the top of it so that the road is like exactly where the conveyor belt is going to be and then I'll upgrade the road with the invisible conveyor belt roads that I created. Well, I mean, to be real, I didn't actually fully create them from scratch. They're based off of the Nico OAS roads, the invisible roads. He, on the workshop, he created a ton of different types of them. And they're generally used for like detailing very complicated intersections and things where you're using ploppable asphalts and curbs. And I would have loved to use those for this, but the thing about it is there's only one invisible zonable road that he created that's like one lane and in, in one direction and it would work perfectly except for the fact that terrain doesn't conform to it which is a problem for creating zonable areas so i ended up having to change some settings re-upload that as my own road even though in reality this is just an edited version of the nico oas roads mm -hmm. So the real meat and potatoes of this episode is building this central sorting area. And that's just kind of what I'm calling it because it, we're dealing with conveyor belts and crates and that's kind of what would happen if you had one central place where all the crates went into and left. But in reality, what I'm creating here is the main intersection for 
the city, it's like the main freeway intersection, basically. So there's two levels to the city, right? There's the lower level, that's kind of like the slums, where the people who run the colony, the very poor people who sort of got tricked to coming to Mars live, the people who have like no financial means to pay for a trip back home, they're kind of stuck here. And they, that area is going to have like a lower conveyor belt system running throughout the city. And then the upper area, it's like very rich, very nice, lots of green grass and plazas and trees and very nice buildings. That area will have its own conveyor belt system that kind of has upper access. And the reason I'm doing that is because roads and city skylines only have a certain vertical distance of buildings that they can get access to so in order to get access to buildings that are ground level I need a conveyor belt that's pretty close to ground level and these this upper area is going to be a good amount higher than that it's probably going to be 10 or 12 stories up so a road on the ground level can't reach that so there needs to be a second level above of, of conveyor belts in order to get access to those upper areas so this interchange, this central sorting area, kind of needs to reflect that. So even though this interchange is going to end up looking very confusing and individual paths are going to be really hard to follow and figure out exactly where they're going, I built it with the general idea that we would have four roundabouts sort of within the interchange where the bottom two service the lower area of the city, the upper two service the upper area of the city, and then there's connections between the lower two and the upper two. So in terms of the lower one, all the roads that are trying to enter the sorting facility on the lower level all connect to that lower roundabout. And so they'll all be on that roundabout, and then that has access to the roundabout directly above it, which is connected to the exits for the lower level. So you would basically come in, you'd, you'd meet up with everyone else who just came in on the lower roundabout, and then you would go up one level and find your exit to go to where you're trying to go. And then that lower roundabout has an additional two exits. It doesn't just go only to the roundabout directly above it, which has access to that lower roundabout also has connections to get you to the upper two roundabouts, which will get you to the upper parts of the city. So in this central sorting facility, this is the only place that's gonna have a connection between the upper half of the city and the lower half of the city in terms of the roads. So yeah, I mean, the inter interchange looks confusing and it might even sound confusing, but to just simplify it, there's two roundabouts that are where cars enter or crates enter the exchange. There's two roundabouts where crates exit the exchange and then there's connections between all four roundabouts. So that's basically how it works. So this footage that you're watching is actually the third time around making this exchange. I, I, it, it ended up being beneficial because I got a better and better idea of what I was going to do. But one of the times I, I stupidly forgot to like save or something. Another time I forgot to record and it, I didn't get very far both times that I did it, but it was annoying. And in the end, it actually was helpful because it, this is a really complicated interchange to make. and. One of the things that I learned from doing it the first two times was the props that I created, the conveyor belt props, I did do sort of, I mean, it, it's smart in some ways, it's stupid in other ways. There's a thing called culling when you're creating an asset where you have a basically invisible piece of the asset that's much larger than the entire asset as a whole. And you do that in order to prevent the asset from disappearing on you when it's um, very close to the edge of the screen. So like 
For instance, there's a lot of props. You probably notice it when it's like at the very bottom of your screen, you're about to like pan up and, and it's gonna disappear from view like naturally, but all of a sudden it like pops and disappears on you even though it's still just like a little bit in frame. The reason that it does that is because it doesn't have this invisible thing that's larger than it. But what that does is it makes it so that the transparent selector things when you're using the move it tool, like the circles that pop up when you're selecting the prop, are really large, they're bigger than the prop actually is, and that makes it super, super difficult to select what you're trying to select when there's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them all like on top of each other and near each other. So what I did was I made this interchange using procedural objects versions of all of the conveyor belts instead. And that actually worked out great because, I don't know if this was always a feature, but procedural objects now has the ability to keep those animated props animating when you turn them into procedural objects instead of props and the best thing obviously is that the transparent selectors the little circles are very very small so it's much easier to tell what you're clicking on uh, when you're moving them around and things so basically what I did was I got all of the different conveyor belt pieces and built a, a couple little versions of, of them, like sometimes with railing, sometimes without, like sometimes, you know, three pieces that make up a curve and put all of those just outside of the sorting area so that I could just see what I had, quickly select a little section of them or just one and, and copy it into the actual exchange. The other reason that doing this with procedural objects instead of props is pretty much necessary is because I wanted this to look good really as good as I could and obviously the props that I made are um, very particular sizes like there's no changing this the size of it if I need to make a smaller one to, to match a segment that's smaller like a road segment and so being able to go in and edit where the vertices of the mesh of the prop are like being able to take a post from one of the railings of the conveyor belt and just move it over just a little bit in order to line it up with another post from another prop that ended up really like making this look a lot better because otherwise I would just have like a million of these like railing posts sticking up all over the place and so being able to like move it just a little bit to line it up with one or making like a segment of railing that was like extremely tiny in order to be like right in the middle of like a u-turn in the road or like being able to like move over certain certain areas of the railing in order to get it exactly where you need there's just a lot of like manipulating of these railings that i had to do in order to just get all the railings and posts matching up and lining up and also just getting this whole interchange looking a lot neater and cleaner because first two times i did it it was pretty messy looking So doing all the roads and conveyor belts on top of them, converting the roads to invisible roads, all that, that whole process took a really, really long time. And I'm obviously not showing you every single thing that happened because it's just incredibly repetitive. Once you kind of get the idea of how I did it, you can imagine how I did the rest of it. So the next step in the process for doing this interchange here was decorating it. And number one thing was just the supports and the pillars that are holding up all the conveyor belts because obviously these aren't just going to be floating midair and I'm using these vanilla pedestrian path pillars they just come with the game you can plop them down with the find it mod and the move it mod and I like them because they look like very worn and dirty concrete like maybe there's something dripping from the top you know so using I'm using those I just went through and placed them underneath as much as I could under the conveyor belts and some of the conveyor belts are directly on top of other ones so it was kind of an issue in some places and there was one particular spot where i had to use some ronix 69 expressway pillars some of the ones that kind of have like a little like hole for a lower level to go through and then the upper level can sit on top of that so pillars was was thing number one the other thing which was something that I learned doing this interchange three times. The first, for one of the first times around, 
I halfway through I found this really awesome oil processing building that's from the workshop but I think it's just a normal I have it set to a normal industry building but it looks really cool it matches these conveyor belts really well and I halfway through building it one of the other times I placed it down right in the middle and was like oh my god I have to have all these conveyor belts like going through this building and stuff right around it so that's what I did this time around and I think that turned out really cool looking and so I just wanted to like play off that building because it, it just like the pipes and things that are part of it are great so I placed down a bunch of smokestacks in sort of the last couple little available areas of this exchange that had like a full straight down view from the very top to the ground where there was it was like unobstructed it was, there was a surprisingly few areas like that and then I did some like pipes and other buildings on the ground and, and like throughout. So those smokestacks I turned into procedural objects and turned them 90 degrees so that instead of pointing up, they were pointing sideways and made a number of those kind of like going through the interchange like they were sort of like service pipes and then got like a bunch of industrial buildings and just placed them all over the ground at you know ground level to cover up the area that's below the lowest level of the exchange so there's like you know 15 20 feet or whatever beneath the the very bottom level of the conveyor belts between that and the ground so that i was just trying to fill up with very low lying industrial buildings like maybe some of them were a little bit taller and I was able to squeeze in between conveyor belts like for the parts that are sticking up too high but that was pretty difficult because I didn't build this area with that in mind so only that only worked in a couple places I had to find some lower height buildings for other places but I was just basically trying to cover up the ground with like as much industrial looking stuff as possible so you couldn't really see the ground anywhere you were and then the last decorating that I did was just with like any props that I found that could possibly fit. So I have some scaffolding, like a big stairs that leads up and then there's like a walkway that gets you to this like top of the oil building that I put down and I put down like a lot of lights throughout. So I switched it to nighttime, got some really awesome kind of like orange spotlights and put them on the top of the oil building and that kind of lights the whole area from above which looks really cool and then I got a bunch of red lights and those ones aim up and I put those all over the ground so that underneath like in the depths of the sorting exchange it's like red and glowing down there which also I think looks really cool I think in general with the city and especially with these sort of lower areas the industrial areas and the kind of poor slum areas that are all like ground level. I'm really gonna try and build a lot of it at night and do as much as I can to make it look really, really good in the dark and placing down lights in really specific ways because obviously there's not gonna be any street lights at all in this in the city because there's no ground level streets with street light assets like built into them. So I'm gonna have to be placing down all the lights myself. So a lot of time is gonna be spent at night, I think. That's it for this episode. This was a fun one, first building in this new map and some, some really crazy stuff got built this episode. And it's kind of the thing where I don't think anything else is would be able to be built in the city until this interchange is built. So glad this is out of the way and we can actually start getting into the city in the next couple episodes. So look forward to that. I'm City Walk City Wall and I'll see you all next time on Mars.